got a moment When they see you down, there's no they love and no laugh Hey everybody, welcome to The Bounce Back I'm your host Bobby I got a special guest with me Why don't you introduce yourself? I know you by a couple names So why don't you yeah, introduce yourself and where you're from? My name's Larry from Cambridge Born and raised Okay, so I feel like uh, we were just talking. Last time we seen each other was Concord, right? Absolutely. So you was just coming there. I was just on my way out. Right. 2011. How long was you in there afterwards? Well, I just came home um, in March. So I've almost been home a year now. Just came home in March. Um, uh, March 30th just was released. So after 15 years. And you was you was in Concord that whole time since after nah. I left or you moved around? Oh yeah, yeah, I absolutely <laughs> I moved around. That place is like, you know, they don't leave you in one spot for too long. Yep, yep. So uh what kind of reasons? Disciplinary reasons did they move you around? Yeah, that yeah. Definitely had a lot of issues as far as um, you know, uh just my living conditions was concerned. Like everybody, you know, pretty much was on their own in there. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. we've been there so it's it was just pretty much a free for all, and you know I got into a lot of I got into a lot of altercations that landed me to be shipped out of prison to um, be shipped to different prisons stuff like that. So fights and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah same happened with me. I I didn't really get in no trouble upstate. I was such a small timer, bro, with the three years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's like that's small time compared to. It literally of, was, you know. I just went in there, head down. You just let me just do me. Right. That, that was pretty much it. I had really no issues upstate. All my fights was kind of like county shit, right. right? County shit. And I feel like before that too, we was in. Um, I seen you at Wuben Superior, bro. During I feel like during Smokes and Buddha's trial, yeah. wasn't you? We yep. was there I was for going that. To trial for that. I was going to trial for my case out of there. Too. And you was where? You was at Nashville Street at the time because yeah, you wasn't. I was in Nash. I was in Nashville Street. I was in South Bay. When out um during the Buddha when during um their trial I was uh I was in South Bay during that time they were just transporting me back and forth there between there and Plymouth just to bring me to court in mm. Woburn. Damn. Yeah. Damn. So how so I I know the perspective a little bit. You did obviously more time. I know the perspective from doing state time in Massachusetts like as a white dude, as a black dude. Can't you're from Cambridge? Explain to me what what that was like. Do you get a lot, you feel like you get more mistreatment from the um, COs and stuff like that? I feel like I never really had too, too many issues with COs or anything like that. Most of them I feel like up there was white. I don't know if that was why, or, uh, I don't know why, but. I was gonna say on that, I really didn't have too many issues as far as, you know, being on the facility while black, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of that going on as far as like, it was just evident. It was clear that that's the time that the correctional officers up there was on. They just really, you know, that as, as but as far as like, I pretty much got along with everybody, you mm -hmm. know, in every race, as far as that's concerned, only people I really had a problem with was was the guys, was the police yeah. that was there. They, they really made it hard for me to rehabilitate, for me to, you know, um, get a fresh start because they wanted to make sure that they're guaranteeing their pay by keeping me in prison or, any one of us like that's mm -hmm. how that that's how pretty much how i learned how the system works just being there through experience yeah and that's why they hit people with long sentences too to keep those places packed and all that stuff too is right. uh the, these longer sentences and you got you know your brother's doing a long sentence just as mine is doing a long sentence and i was kind of talking about how you know that's a lot on, on family members too it's not like we ain't the only ones in there bidding Right. Family members on the outside, there's children involved sometimes, you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's tough on everybody, and even visitors coming in, the COs aren't always the kindest to them, you know what I mean? Right. They're pretty rude and all that stuff, too. Right. When did you first start getting, did you do the DYS thing? Oh, yeah. You, so you, all right, so you did the whole, yeah. that's kind of my whole thing is like, started at uh, detention, suspension, DYS, county, work, work my way. To, to the state bit and all that stuff. Um, you went to, to Harvard Street, DYS? Yes. In, in Dorchester? Yeah. I actually like with Charlestown started, Unit Spectrum? Yes. I, all yep. that. Uh, I started at the old the old Charlestown, where the old building was, where we shared the building with the female DYS unit before and mm -hmm. moving over to the new building. So I was there, you know, since I've been there, in and out of there. My I began this, this journey, you know, um, 
not even to glorify, but I began this journey since 96, since I was 13 years old. You know, uh, got introduced to the DYS, to the prison system all together. You got introduced young then, because I, I, I didn't go to DYS till I was almost time to like age out. I felt like I got a couple chances. I wasn't always such a, um, such a knucklehead. Such a knucklehead. So talk to me about how much time did they did they get, give you? You had ACC, Armed yeah, Career Criminal. You, you want, if you want to explain what an Armed Career Criminal is in Massachusetts Absolutely. and what happened with all that. So basically an Armed Career Criminal is like California, if you've ever heard, it's referred to as the three-strike law. Yep. So in other words, you know, in Massachusetts, it's a little bit more, you know, technical from a legal standpoint because, you know, um, you have to actually have a gun. You know what I'm saying? You have to, the your 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 base charge, your main charge has to be a gun. You have to mm -hmm. get, have um, get charged with unlawful possession of a firearm, and then from there, you know, uh, they look at your criminal history, and if you got one, two, or three felonies all in a staircase, you know, they can use those, whether they be violent or drug offenses. Long as they are a felony, they can use those to enhance your sentence. Which, unfortunately for me. My first time getting caught with a, a gun, you know, um, they ended up giving me 15 years mandatory with no good time, you know, just, sh I guess, trying to send a, a philosophical message for all others. Like, you know, get they're going to make an example out of me, which was what was said through and, throughout my trial, you know, throughout the trial process, wasn't offered any deals. Oh, damn. Uh, they didn't They didn't offer me any deals. I do now. I remember you saying that mm -hmm. yeah, back then. Wow. The, the ADA in the case much. was a guy named John C. Verna who was now a uh, disgrace. <laughs> and um, in that sense, you know, he just he just, he, had a, he just went after me, you know, went mm. after me and my brother and uh, and just got us for things. So since then it's come out he's uh, disgraced himself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that what happened? Because you got out after 10, right? And you were just saying that was 15... Mandatory? Yeah, no. Did you end up flipping your case? Yeah, Did you get resentenced? Yeah, I ended up I ended up flipping it. You know, I got I ended up giving back at least six months, you know, um, cause the fight didn't stop. You know, even though they closed every door and the appeals and that's pretty much how the system is. They mm -hmm. easy to get in and hard to get out of. You know, even if there's case law and things on your side that's that's saying you must be released, they will fight with everything they have just to make sure you're not. You know, and then it becomes a flip. It comes a reverse. Now you're trying to find technicals to get you a fair trial, to get you sh directly released, rather than while, you know, in the beginning, you, you're you said to have all your rights fixed in the beginning. You're said to have all your rights fixed at trial. And, you know, that's where I think it came into play for me because I went to trial and I lost. And I didn't have, you know, it's no secret. I, I had an all-white jury, you mm -hmm. know, white judge, white prosecutor, you know, and it was just me. Yeah. So it really, I did stand out, you know, and um, yeah, I, flip, I ended up, you know, learning the law while I was in there. You know, that's what I did to pass my time, you know, because every day was a day that I can get out. Every day that I woke up was a day that I can get out, you know, mm. um, based on, you know, their rules, you know, the court's rules. So in that regard, I, that, that's how I got my way, you know, uh, through the system, you know, that's how I survived it, you know, and I use that word loosely because... A lot of shit goes on in there, man. A lot, and you know it. You yeah, know, as no, far no as doubt. how that goes, you know, and you know, luckily I wasn't mixed up too, too much in the jail politics, but you know, um, I definitely, you know, knew everything that was going on while I was in there. You know, I was, you know, I, I definitely kept my head low as far as that's concerned. But absolutely, the jail, the prison system, yeah, it's it's definitely corrupt, and I say that, you know, as being the horse, you know, from the horse's mouth, and you hear it, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I would have been home. In 10 years, I ended up uh, getting in trouble, you know, um, bringing myself back to prison, you know, um, mind based on a lie, but nonetheless, I ended up going back and having to complete another five years after I was only home 30, 37 days after being locked up for 10 and a half years. Wow. That, how, man, how does, how does that feel? That but only being like, that must, that first day you wake up there and you realize you're back in the cell, that's got to be. Only 37 days. How did, how did that feel it was, towards you, It was man. devastating. It was devastating because, you know, the first 10 years, you know, in that, in the first 10 years of the bid, you know, it flew. None, you know, one, I did two days. Day I went in, day I got out. Mm. So in between time, don't count. You make it count for something. You yourself, if you want to help yourself, because they're not going to help you, you know, to help you reintroduce yourself 
yourself into the society. That's just not how it works. Right. Even though that's what they say. So um, that's what they say, and that's what they should be doing. Because like it or not, a lot of those people are getting out, and they're going to be in the same society with a lot of those family members. And if you're not rehabilitating these people, giving them skills and giving them um, education, they're going to revert back to old ways. I feel absolutely. like absolutely, <laughs> recidivism is high. Like you said, point. that it's it's that revolving door. It's that revolving door. I think it was something like eighty percent people release are like back in within the first five years, yes. man. Yes, the first five true. years. Facts. And why do you think that is? Because there is no jobs, you know, and, and, there's, and then nonetheless, not to say there's no jobs, you know, there's just those people that do come home, they look for things to be handed to them because they're still, you know, under that uh, old adage of, you know, mm. oh, I'm a convict, so now I can't get a job. Actually, there's a bunch of jobs. I'm out here and I'm yep. working two, three jobs, you know, trying to run my own, you know, my own little business because I believe in owning the ladder rather than climbing one. So in, my, in that sense, you know, I'm out here doing that. There's a bunch of jobs, but there's just people that have to have the commitment, you know, which starts the job and, you know, pretty much the consistency to finish it. And yeah, and a lot of times, too, people will have no skills or anything like that, but be expecting to get some sort of ill, great-paying job, too. You right. know what I mean? And Absolutely. it's like some, you might have to humble yourself, get a job. The way I say it's always easy to get a job when you have a job, too. Right. You get a job, but don't get complacent. Don't just be like, oh, I got a job. I'm good. There's right. still other jobs. You could, you could work your way up. Definitely, maybe not in that job, but there's definitely always other people looking to hire the the ex convict thing that could be a barrier for sure, um, but you can't you can't give up though. It's, no, you, you can't give up. You only need the one the one yes. You know no. what I mean? You take a hundred, hundred no's and all that stuff. So now me and my me and my brother we was in Cambridge together for a little. I got in a fight. They shit me out. That was kind of at least you know. Don't nobody wish their family member being in there, but it's when you have a familiar face. Even just someone you know, even me and you, we know each other. It, that, right. That's kind of some sort of um, comfort in that. And then having my brother, that was. Were you ever? You guys were on the same oh, yeah. unit at some point, oh, right? Yeah. Same, same I mean, jail, I, same I was facility. With my brother, where my my brother um, is Mel. You know, I, I was with my brother. We were in, we was we was pretty much everywhere together before they end up changing the whole state system where they don't allow family um direct family members or immediate oh. family members to even be on the same unit. now when did they do that, they that and that's that just up. in state county is that no that that was that was i mean it was always a rule in 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 uh the county yeah but they didn't really push it because i was there was one point i was on b part right. my cousin ronnie same last name i was with two other cousins granted they had different last names right me and my cousin ronnie same last name well but. they go that's the thing there was a dispute over that because there was an issue in prison where me and my brother were roommates for you know uh months on in you know every time we was on the same camp together so in that sense you know, they was like, hey, the rule changed, and this was, I want to say, 2018. And they, they said just the rule shipped changed. one of y'all out type of shit? They just moved or? me to another unit and okay. did not allow us to be on the same unit. Like, we even, wow. we, they said just because of the fact, and then there was two Should be grandfathered ones. in, at least. It, 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 we tried to ask for that because they knew us, and we've been, uh, we've been, this is at SBCC, so this is at Super So this is the Max, this is a lot, yeah, lot of people getting in trouble up there. And they, and it was like, that was the closest thing, you know, for us being... To be home yeah. was to have each other, you know. Yeah. Just because we don't have a house, we still got each other. Yeah. And so, getting with that being said, it was just like when we made a dispute over it, they said just because our last names match is the reason why we can't be on the unit together. Wow, wow. So it was definitely based on if you got the same last name because it was two other brothers that didn't have the same last name. They knew they were brothers, but right. they still let them be on the same unit because they had different last names. So it's like it seems like they just do whatever to make <laughs> any time if you can't can get life to be a little bit just a little bit easier on there they want to kind of take away from that and state prison <laughs> you know wasn't I mean? like, like that before kinda... state prison wasn't like that they actually you know we they knew guys served a lot of time up there so they pretty much left us alone and let us you know go through the programs and give us now they just took all programs away and then you know they just they 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 infraction they infraction on our mental health like crazy up there they just violated us in so many different ways damn so, yeah there's a lot of um I don't know if you remember Sheriff DePaula yeah. in, in in Middlesex County. Absolutely. I guess there was a whole big thing with him. He was trying. He was like, it's just all corrupt. He was double dipping in some sort of yeah. some sort of retirement Same. and pension uh, pension and his salary at the right. same time and all that stuff. But we're but we're the criminals. It's like 
to me, those type of people, because you're put in position of power and you, you should be held up to a higher standard. Right. You know, especially like I see policemen get arrested and they get slaps on the wrist. I'm like, that should be double time, bro. Like right. people trust you, man. People right. put their trust in, in these cops and, right. and stuff like that. And then when they mess up, it's kind of like uh, it's less of a punishment, which I feel like that shit should be more for sure. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I feel like I have one issue with the cops where people want to ignore facts. But me putting facts to say that the police think they're above the law is mm -hmm. because they are. Right. right, the, right. Reason why the, police, yep. the reason why the police think they're above the law is because they learn that they're the only ones. If you know, you know, the Massachusetts law on the road, the road on uh, the Massachusetts law on the road, you know, how the streets you know how they are dictated by law in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. But we see police all the time turn on their sirens just to get around traffic, you know, because they don't want to wait like everybody else, which makes them factually above the law in that sense, mm. which Abuse needs to be changed. Yeah. And they do that all the time because they're the only ones that could do that. Now, let me and you have been on a roll. Let's say we have a girlfriend or somebody pregnant trying to get them to the hospital. We could still get in trouble for violating the law that they're able to, you know, skirt past. They're able to shortcut that just mm, because of be who they are. That that That's where the problem is, is lying at because there's a whole bunch of issues dealing with the police in that sense where there's if you look if you look across the board at what they can do what they can get away with the power that they have the authority delegated to them mm. that makes them dangerous yeah. that makes us scared that's why we run you know and i say we being me of a black person or somebody from a neighbor from the from the urban neighborhood i'm gonna run every time i see them because of the fact that you know they they could do so much to me you know, and that mm. um, it could just, you know, like they did how to get me in prison the first time, 15 years. All they did was just, you know, uh, uh, move a few things around, cut a few corners and voila. You know, I got a, a clear, nice, clean conviction with a bow on it yeah. for 15 years. Wrapped so up. Yeah, that's, that's I got I really I got like too, as far as the um, to police thing go after the last case I caught, bro, they came up. I was in, living in mall. They came up the back stairs. I, I don't know. I was like blackout drunk. I just heard boom, boom, come upstairs. I came outside with like a two foot pole and I had guns drawn on me. Right. And like I didn't, I hardly remember any of it. This is me just reading the police report. They're right. like, Mr. Lucas, put down the um the, the weapon. They said I didn't even, I did not comply the first time. I took another step. They asked me again. A lot of times I look at that and I wonder like, yo, if I was black, what if I got that second chance? Nah, I don't you know what I'm so. saying? From a know. white cop who already, who after the fact wrote like a whole victim or whatever, not victim impact state, some something like that for having to draw his weapon and how it, it messed him up mentally. Mind you, I'm like, my comparison is like, whoa, that's like a carpenter is going to have to use a hammer. You're, you're a cop. You're trained on that. Like, what did you think you were signing up for? Like a whole man having to pull a weapon. That's... That's what it's all about, but like like I said, a lot of times I look at that and think, man, like count my blessings, count my blessings. It, things could have went a lot differently that day. They they said I tried to throw the dude off the fifth floor. Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. He wouldn't have survived that. So no. this is why I'm like, man, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes the reasons above us is not for us to know. Everything does happen for a reason, and you gotta trust that, put your faith in that, and then just keep keep going forward. One hundred. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you said you've been out for like almost a year now. So you was in during COVID. Yeah. My brother told me that they was offering dudes. Um, they were like, oh, yeah, there's something going around. You'd be able to get 80, 90 days good time for getting the vaccine. They said um, a bunch of people lined up, got the vaccine. And then they kind of were like, oh, yeah, actually, that didn't pass through. Yeah, they was kind of. And they kind of like. Mm -hmm. Pull the rug on what? Mm -hmm. What was going on with the with the vaccine when you was in there? Like, well, what were they trying to push it? How nah. was like how was the lockdowns, man? Talk to me about that because that seems like whole time almost. Yeah. So every time, you know, they was able to get a free day or two or three out the week just to call a COVID, you know, emergency that everybody has to be locked in while they're out, you know, watching TV. Not, when I say they, I mean the the, the correctional officers. But in there, they would just, you know, have the whole... On, and, well, so I was in Susan Baranowski, so this is where it was the worst because, you know, of the January 10th incident that happened up there, you know, whatever the case may be. So they locked us, they lock us down for any old reason. 
after that incident occurred. Now they locked us down for any what, reason. Was that the riot? Computers yeah. getting smashed and all that no, stuff? No, that or? wasn't that. That wasn't the riot. That was uh, the when the CEO, two CEOs, oh. got beat up you yeah. know, right after New Year's okay. in 2020. So um, they got their, you know, they got their backs broke. You know, they got they, a lot of things happened to them that was just, you know, yeah. it was critical. And yeah. that's what they get for me, in my standpoint, because they enticed it. If And uh, well, I could touch I on mean, that from my experiences, man, it, I've never seen a CEO get beat up for no reason. No. I hardly even see them get beat up or a lot, a lot of times. You know, if they're jumping in on something, they might catch it out. But I've never seen, like, people just don't. And that's the thing about it, and they don't never expose what was the re root cause, which is the way they're treating us like crap in it. Like, that's just how it works. They don't treat us right. They, you know, they're spitting their f in our food if they can get the chance, you know. So it really was yeah. survival in there because we're there for years. So, but, you know, the COVID pep epidemic, that really was like a, it really was a whole episode in and of itself because of the fact that, they would lock guys in. I, I myself experienced, you know, firsthand being locked in with somebody that had COVID twice. Damn. He asked, asked to be moved. Both of us putting in slips, doing whatever we have to do, calling mental health crisis. They're ignoring us, calling mental health. And mind you, I have, I have, I have seven, severe mental health. You know, obviously from, you know, just uh, growing up and even before I went to prison. You know, I've, I've had severe PTSD, bipolar. I have a whole bunch of things going on with me. Mm -hmm. You know that. I, I'm crying out for help for, you know, it's, it's been taking me, you know, all this time to really try to reflect and, you know, really try to find the problem, what's going on with me, you know what I'm saying? So in this sense, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever caught COVID, you know, mm -hmm. um, cause I was vigilant in there, you know, always washed my hands, always had the mask on nonetheless, but I obviously we couldn't social distance. So that was the problem. And they had a whole floor full of empty cells and said that we could not use them. They are unoccupied, you know, just for no reason whatsoever. They weren't offline. They work, everything. It was running water. There was everything in there, toilets work. And there was no reason why they wanted to have us in there. But the reason why they didn't have us in there was because of the fact, innuendo, you know, the January 10th incident. They wanted to punish us and, and keep the gift given, you mm -hmm. know, in that sense. They wanted to continue to punish everybody. And the root of the problem started with the COs, you know, being, uh, you know, racist. There, there was mm -hmm. the, this white CO, he was accused of being racist to the Spanish guys, said something to them that obviously sparked one of them who had life in prison, so had nothing to lose, to do what he did to him, and then caused everybody, you know, caused everything to go downhill for their, from there for them, you know. So it was it was bad, and it, and it had that effect because. With that being said, they took away all programs, mm. you know, plucked everybody, the guys that's on their way out the door out of programs, just to lock the prison down to send a message. Wow. So that's, I went through that whole thing, you know, God willing, I'm still here. You know, I made it through, didn't get more time, you know, any of the sort, but it was, that was a hardship. I've never dealt with that before. That's a I tough mean, way to live. When they put us with the COVID and they did that to us and they locked us down, they actually put guns that looked like that camera, you know, mm. on us, she made us strip down to our underwear, you know, and literally was ready to shoot. I watched guys get shot in their head at point blank range when they didn't comply, you know, and they was, and they just brought- Get shot with- the, with, the, uh, with a pellet gun. Pellet guns, with, yeah, the rubber shit. With the rubber, rubber bullet bullets, ones. okay. So it was really like, it was like, you know, and guys was willing to go through that just because now they're looking at lawsuits, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, you know, and look at Charlie Baker. He got our office. So hope that mm -hmm. was all based on what he did. He's the one, him and Karen Polito were the ones that, you know, brought that ruckus to that prison, which I was there, unfortunately, for that for that stint of time, you know, for them. How was it going with the, with how were they testing people? What, like, what were they doing if you got, like you said, they weren't even separating you from his cellmate who had COVID. Right. No, they, uh, they, they would you know, come with a wave, you know, and they would say that guys was refusing to take the vaccine, you know, because of that time where everybody was taking a stand against the vaccine, mm -hmm. you know, with that being said. So a whole bunch of guys, they would say, oh, uh, if y'all want, you know, the vaccine, you know, sign up, but then they would never come around for us to sign up to go take it. Then guys would voice, you mm -hmm. know, the fact that they want to take the vaccine, which I, for one, was one of them, and I ended up getting vaccinated myself, me and my brother. So mm -hmm. we, um, yeah, we I got. got I'm not one of those people who like if, who's like scared of it or anything no. like that. It was just, uh, I, you know, I would rather have not have, but I just did it to kind of put other people 
a, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the living situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was children coming over the house I was living in, all mm-hmm. that stuff. So I was like, I get it. I'm, right. not, I'm not one of those people that's like, think it's gonna kill me. No, I don't. I didn't you know either. I, mean? I was first one. Especially, to get I try to shot. stay in shape. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, fit. Oh, that all comes with it. That all that all helps, especially you know. You always like seem like someone's always in shape and stuff too. You worked out a lot yeah. in um, in, in prison, right? Yeah, that's where I. I feel like it. for me, I'm like, man, that. Like, I had to get out to look back and kind of be like, what got me through the toughest time of my life? I wasn't a big card player or anything like that. I'm like, honestly, working out got me through through that. I feel like out here, if I'm working out, it could get me through anything. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. And that's, that's how truth. I feel. That's That was my that was my sanctuary, you know. Um, the escape. Yeah. The most, I, the most free I've ever felt in there, a lot of times, not even the working out, was honestly the basketball. Playing, really? playing ball because I was just too dialed in on, like, the cross not getting stolen. You know what I mean? Play, yeah. I was just so dialed in and focused that, like, for a second I forgot I was, I, was in, um, I was in there. But that's another thing, too. That's physical activity. And a lot of that correlates with the mental, too. Like I said, that got me through. If that got me through that, if, I, if I'm working out out here, I feel like I can get through anything. But now, now that we're free... Why don't you tell me a little bit what you got going on? What what kind of things do you want to do in life? You know, what are you what are you looking forward to? So right now, what I got going on is I got um, Price Chop Fitness going on. That's definitely you know um, not just for me, but for all those that I feel like you know um, wants to be in the same position. I just I didn't I, I started working out you know two two years ago straight three years going on three years now. I started working out straight three years nonstop. You know just you know and I just took it now i'm just taking to the next level as soon as i got out and it started when i was in prison i said i'm gonna do this and then now i got out and and i'm doing it you know and i'm i'm not really one to just like talk about what i want to do in that sense but you know um i just do it you know and and that's that's what my those are you know that's how i get i reach people that's how people distinguish me from everybody else because i'm not just one to just talk i walk it too you yeah. know, no matter what it is action know? yeah action speaks uh, for audience for sure absolutely um so high school like i want to get into the whole like how you know we was in dearborn so obviously there was issues going on back then did you finish high school yeah i did out on the on the street you yeah. went to Ringe. yeah i went to Ringe and i ended up graduating from um arlington high school okay that's what's up because i went to Ringe, graduated 03 a lot of times people think that like oh you uh like when did you get your g i'm like i didn't get my g i graduated i was actually got it before i aged out of dys and i went to dys had my di- uh, diploma so i didn't have to go to school so right. they had me up in the kitchen and all that stuff what kind of, um, what kind of educate? Did you take any educational classes on the inside? I know you said a lot of that was was cut out. Nah, nah, I didn't. I mean, I just took a lot of uh, legal classes as far oh, as yeah. I just yep. really dealt with my case. Like I zoned in on my case because I felt like you know they did me wrong, and the only person I was gonna fix that wrong was me. Yeah, it's your freedom. End of the day, even paid lawyers, man, they only care so much about it. Only, nobody's gonna care more about your freedom. Than right. you, right? You know what I mean. So that's cool yeah. that you put the work in. But what if I mean what I've noticed about law is a lot of times it's written f- not for the layman to understand. Like right. you and me, like I feel like they pick the most complicated way to say something, and I feel like a lot of that is done on purpose because they don't want us learning the language. What, well, do, you, what do you think about that? I, I mean, if you read a lot of law. That, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of um. My POV on that is just pretty much. The law is open for interpretation, so every time there's a left, there's a right. You know, you mm-hmm. have to find these cases, and then they want to make want you to make some sort of saga with them, some sort of series. You know, where it creates a path to show why you need to be released. So that's what the that's pretty much what case law is. It's oh, you take little you know excerpts from each case that of a ruling that just came down from a court, and then you try to apply it to your case, and you try to build like a collage of cases to support your argument. Ultimately, it's all an argument. It's nothing guaranteed with it. That's Citing why it's these open. other cases. And yeah. every time, you know, and then you have, you know, you have your, you, you have the sides. You have the prosecution side, the Commonwealth, and you have the defense side, and which is the defendant. And in that sense, they just, whoever makes the best argument based on cases, you know, it, you know, wins. Pretty yeah. much, you know, they say life's not a game, but that's exactly what and it is. And the whole, I feel like the thing about the system too is like, it's not geared towards justice. It's geared towards convictions. 
the DA can have evidence that will get somebody off, and or well, at least it may not get them off, but it could tell them like, oh, I know this person didn't do it, but they're like, but we still have enough to mm. convict. Which is at the end of the day that all that really matters is just just racking up convictions. But I'm like, man, there should be some, there got to be some sort of incentive to doing the right thing, to getting just like if you have something where you know, like, nah, he didn't do it. You should come be able to come forward, and and it should be worth twenty convictions. Just getting all, you know what I mean, for a I DA to be like, this dude didn't do it, like, and, and, and actually caring about the right thing and justice, which is what the system's named after justice. But that's all, that's all bullshit, man. I mean, but that's the prosecutor. The, so the prosecutor, their job in this sense is to be, you know, right. And it's not their justice. fault. It's this. I mean, it no, is, but actually, man, it's this. The system is geared for them to set up to go for them to to, to be that well, way. Well, the thing about it is, a bunch of prosecutors, and they're very rare that fight for justice, whether somebody did it or not. They seek justice. That is a prosecutor's role in his duty. Right. Her or him. That is their duty is to seek justice. Justice being that if he didn't convict and you do everything in your power the same way you would if he can if to convict him you do it to not you know to um find that he didn't do it you look mm -hmm. and they don't do that because a lot of prosecutors take on the mind state after leaving the academy or wherever they graduated from with i'm gonna get as many convictions as i can like the prosecutor in my case john verner who is equivalent to annie dukin because he went and cut corners to, sh to get his conviction rates up so that he can get a higher paid position, which he was in before he went down 2018 disgrace because of Annie Dukin. So because of that, um, they cut a lot of corners and they have this mind state like, I don't like you, I have so much power because a prosecutor's job is, is, is to charge people and charge whoever, they could charge somebody, whoever they wanna charge. So they, their job, they have two duties in that sense. They have uh, it's their criteria is to charge some. Um, they have the right to charge anybody with whatever, according to whatever the crime that they committed. They can charge how many charge, and they can charge whoever. You know, they can be like this guy did it, but because I don't like you know, guy A did it, but because I don't like guy B, I'm just gonna charge guy B and let guy A off. And they have the pure discretion to do it. No one can interfere with that. Not even the courts, because the prosecutor, the Commonwealth's office is viewed as an executive branch which if you know about the three branches of government you know the the the, the judicial branch mm -hmm. the legislative and the and the executive, the, and the executive branch. Like that, right so yeah. it comes down like they have separation of power they cannot infringe on each other so in that sense he has the right to charge whoever with whoever with whatever if he so chooses yeah. and that's not justice and they all take on that mind state leaving the academy as I'm a prosecutor I'm not a justice I'm not to seek justice like but I'm chasing to seek convictions the they they're chase the, the convictions clout. that's the convictions how more than justice they're not chasing and that's very clear that that's what they career do they do orientated. it from a young age too they're like 22 I remember when I and quit and the system's geared toward that and that's I think purposeful Right. I think it is purposeful. And, and that's the thing. Me, when I flipped my case the first time, you know, I was able to catch the prosecutor with his pants down. I think I got him fired, you know, got him working for Wayfair or something like that because of the fact that, mm. you know, he really thought that I didn't know my stuff. But let's talk about that. Fired. Why? How, how come these people aren't charged? This is, you know what I'm saying? They don't, cause that's because that's prosecutorial, prosecutorial misconduct, right? Right. That's the thing. But that's not criminal charges. I know any did Annie Dukin end up getting charged criminally, right? Oh yeah. But she wasn't a oh, prosecutor; yeah. she was working in the. Why don't you explain that whole Annie Dukin thing? So, well, the government Annie Dukin's part of the government, so being part of the government, you know, she's an agent of the government, and in that agent of the government, she's entrusted with a whole bunch of duties that nobody looks over her shoulder about. That's the reason why she was able to get so many convictions in so short time, you know, of her duration as a, a, a government agent. You know, being that she worked for the lab. You know, it came out that she not only signed off on drug certificates being drugs when they weren't, they but weren't she also ran. testified yeah. at trial. You know, but the real, you know, the what the unfortunate part of that whole thing is the fact that a whole bunch of guys uh, uh, who lost time or lost license or, or behind her, and you know, she should, you know, she she got a hefty lawsuit, which was undisclosed. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to my recollection, but you know, I felt like it should it should be an individual, just like if a guy caught you know a, a hundred different murders, you know, individual people who'd be charged a hundred times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though she was charged with all these counts, it still came out that she 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 really got slapped on the wrist, and everybody didn't agree with that. 
Yeah, and this is what I'm saying is these people should be held to a higher standard, if anything, because they take these oaths too before they get sworn yeah. in to do oh, stuff, yeah. and they just totally, uh, they totally abuse it. They t- definitely totally abuse it. Um, back to the educate, because I feel like education to me is very important for people, even if it's just not even formal educate. Just educate yourself, like you said, you educated yourself on the law, right. and that helped you get out. So after you graduated high school, I graduated high school. You never thought about college? Yeah, I actually attended college for a semester or two. I think you did. Oh, yeah, went to Bunker Hill for a second. Nice. What what happened? You just yeah, caught just, up in the streets. Yeah, the hardships, was a criminal. The yeah. hardship of just trying to get on the train with no money was just like you know what? I can't do this. Yeah. You know this is not gonna work. And then I found the streets. Yeah, and and um, the 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 instant gratification that comes with the streets, you know what I mean? You could get the you could put money into some, flip it, and get it back fairly fast. Where it's like the legal way, a lot of times is like you reap what you sow. You got to start sowing, you know, and you got to put in the work, and it takes time for things to develop, right? You know, and right. a lot of times too, people get out. My whole thing was getting out, feeling like I'm playing catch up, right? Yeah. But it's like you can't look at it that way. You just gotta look at. Don't compare yourself to these people who ha- haven't went through what you went through. They're right. not you. They didn't have the setbacks that you had. They didn't have to persevere through what you had to persevere. So just compare yourself to you yesterday. Right. And that's all you all you can do. Cause comparing yourself to people who've been out, never been in trouble, maybe even have things in life like a uh, little head starts, like parents leaving them a house, like that's a lot. That's how they're keeping the uh, wealth generational too cause, right. you know, like the poor stay poor and, and and the rich get rich you know um one thing that since i've been out I, i've been thinking a lot and i want to do a lot is traveling about you how you feel you ever travel well, yeah, where, where some out, places you've been i just ended up getting out to florida i got out to orlando in july when i got out you know i always told myself that i've never been on a plane before in my life so that was the first time <sighs> i ever Same. traveled and i got out to go you know see with a bunch of family that haven't seen me in years you know and they you know they was they were so happy to see me and more so over the fact that i even flew out because mm-hmm. you know, i was offered to go to baltimore last time when i got out for a quick second but I didn't end up making it, so you know. And that's I mean? the whole thing too is um, traveling. Obviously, costs money and stuff like that. So I know a lot of kids travel with their parents when they was younger. I didn't. I never did the Disney trip or anything like that. But that's kind of the stuff that keeps you stuck too, because once you go to other places and you realize there's so much more to this country than Massachusetts. Absolutely. There's so much more to this world than this country, right? Massachusetts is such man. I was uh, <clears throat> I went from Florida to Texas. And going through uh, with my dad, he lives in Florida. My uncle lived in Texas a couple, um, and then we did, like, a road trip. The states are so big. Like, the states are so big compared in, in down south compared to Massachusetts. Massachusetts yeah. is so tiny. You could get from one end of Massachusetts to the other three, four hours. I, right. I mean, these states down there, we were in some states for, like, six hours wow. sometimes, bro. Wow. And there's so much. And, and it's the mindset where we keep ourselves – we put ourselves in these boxes. Like, oh, this is – this is where I'm supposed to be at. This is king. There's nothing more to, but there's so much more to everything. I think the internet is kind of, um, you know, shedding light on, on that for people who like maybe don't see what's going on other places. But what, um, so I always bring up like a place that I would want to go, right? Bucket list is like the Roman Coliseum, the gla- like where the gladiators were. I feel like I'm so, you're such a fighter in life or whatever. Like, yeah. That would be dope for me. I um, love that movie, Sparta. Yeah, like what? what yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. That era, that. Um, what kind? What, what kind of places would you like to go to? I mean, the obvious. I you know, I want to see you know the Leaning Tower with cheese. You know, I want to I want to go out there. I want to live. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what I feel like. You know, just traveling around. I don't really like the process of traveling, like the. You know, the, being on the plane, being for, on the plane for a and all that. Time. Yeah, I hate that. That and you know, or taking long road trips and stuff like that. But I do like, yeah. you know, I like, you know, I just like when I get there, the actual experience of being somewhere that's not home is an actual vacation. That's what I define as a vacation where it's not home at. You know, yeah. but it feel like it. You know, it feel better. You know, because you don't have no problems while you're out there. Mm. When I was out there, you know, I'm by a poolside stuff like that. You know, so. 
uh, jacuzzi stuff. So I'm just, and it's Florida, so it's always hot. It's actually too hot for me, but yeah, yeah, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. want to go that's back. That's why they say uh, Southern mm -hmm. Cal is you get that heat, but without the humidity. So oh. that's that's why I want to go. They say oh, Southern Cal that. is that the best. Well, what about the nerve earthquakes? That's what that's, I'm hesitant with California. But, that, but that's life. Everything is going to have yeah, your right. pros and cons. That's at least how I look you're at right. things. You know you're what right. I mean? You come up here, yeah, we don't got earthquakes, but we got blizzards and it's cold. Right. It's fucking cold sometimes. I don't know. We've been skating. This winter, I feel like we haven't really caught it that bad. I think it's getting worse as the years go by because I remember in the 90s, it was never like this. You yeah. Know, we had it, blizzards of 78, which I wasn't alive for, but nonetheless. It, but that it resonated. Like it, Everybody, oh, yeah. all, all your we, aunts and uncles, they would all talk about we it. We embraced it, too. Yeah. They, as much as they talked about it, I felt like I went through it. Right. You know, the much as my people talked about it, so it was really like, you know, in, in a couple of times, especially in the 90s, it felt like mm -hmm. this. I haven't experienced one since 2000. Like, I haven't seen no blistery cold winters where school used to really get shut down because of that but now yeah. it gets shut down because of hard rain like it's yeah, crazy yeah, 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 yeah. they're killing us with this. <laughs> they're taking away from our kids everything with that the, i feel like it's a lot of um appeasing to the children it's softening the um a lot of the youth i feel Which like a lot fair. of it's soft even i mean i hate to say you're not coming at the youth i don't think it's the youth's fault i mean Absolutely this this definitely not. hard ones but even i went cut through ringe not too long ago the old high school and one of the security guards was even like hey what's up? i'm like you remember me he's like yeah i remember you man mm, i think it was nice. a wall and he was like man he's like these kids nowadays they're not like how you guys were back then know, you know what i mean right. they were like they, they he's like i'm like what do you mean he's like ah oh, they're soft <laughs> yeah they're not they're not even close like it's all different now like as i came out here this is it's it's definitely a twilight zone for me like yeah. definitely i see I, i'm putting my hands on the fountains that run by itself like i don't even you yeah. know for me that was that's mind mind blowing for me just because i lived on the rock i mean so many, even so cell, years. cell phones oh, have yeah. made big jumps uh, technology yeah that could be very i feel like overwhelming for people too just coming out like i always think man if joe or mel when dudes come home like even the stuff that I kind of can't even think of just because I take it for granted. They be like, whoa, what, what do you mean? You you know, videos on cell phone, all this stuff. This what I remember first being in and seeing on commercials. Like, oh, what? You could watch sports highlight or oh, that live sport. And that was all a lot. So, um, yeah, technology is on. Uh, but I feel like they should do more in there to accommodate that. So when you come out, you actually know how to maybe use <laughs> certain technology. Right. It's like they want you to kind of be lost to come out. Did you, did you wrap up from the max? Yeah, I did. Yeah, so you went. So you went to the max. How how many years were you up the max? I was there five years. Five years. Man, that's a um. Yeah, that's a rough um. Talk to me about the max, man. I was never up there. What is um the like? What is it? Twenty um, lockdown situation. Yeah, max is pretty much twenty two and a half hours a day lockdown. It's even worse Shit. now. You know, <laughs> they just now trying to give people you know with mental health crisis a little bit more extra rec time recreational time but nonetheless it's been like every the reason why everybody never wanted to go up to the max from you know with to a maximum security from medium security is because of the freedom you know a little bit of freedom that, that we have extra being in the medium security so in the max security oh, yeah. it was literally like it was cool when you up there and you adjust but it was the the, the difference is the lockdown time was just ridiculous. Like you're you, any a fight breakout, like in the medium of fight breakout, then a whole prison doesn't get locked down, or that whole unit doesn't get locked down. Right. In the max, it's different. One fight happens, and your day is foiled. You're you're locked down for the rest of the day for two days at yeah. that. And, sure. and before it was worse, but we end up getting it. You know, we fought a little bit and we got it down to, you know, 24 hours is all y'all need to investigate whatever, what, the obvious situation. Because a lot a of one times on it's one obvious. fight. I mean, yeah, yeah it's not even like. We all get affected. <laughs> we can't take showers. You know, that first day, you know, it, it, it was bad. It was really bad. And that's where everybody was always trying to get out of the max full because of the, it was so locked down. It was like equivalent to PC. It was like yeah. literally you couldn't even I mean, get even to your, Bill Arica now was kind of crazy with the lockdown. Oh. I think it's like 21 and I'm. Those three months there felt like damn near triple, man. And like, yeah, con like you said, conquer the a beef, pop off. They'll freeze the movement. Yeah. Everybody, they go to the hole, and then you just you I go mean, right I back. I was in back Bill Ricker. That was like, you know, a, a, a back in 05. And literally, you know, back 05, I was there, 02, 05. And uh, 
from there they it was a way it was a lot more freedom but now I always hear that was the old that was the old mm -hmm. Bill Ricker which I remember I went up there like 06 yeah, and it was Costello was in he was from North Cambridge yeah yeah Costello yeah Costello always uh, looked out um for the Cambridge dude to, to yeah, the, I mean to the extent that he, he could that you know what I mean like right. he would you never know, he, shit, he wasn't doing no like shit for us like that you know what I mean nah. like little shit like a move or something he really was helping me out in Cambridge when he was there but yeah no he helped out me because I, I when I was facing my um my state time I had probation time, I, and I wrapped up Bill Ricker, and then they put me on Bill Ricker on Cambridge side of Bill Ricker. I'm like, Cost. I wrote a letter right to him, Costello. Oh, I'm a Cambridge dude. Cambridge style. Bro, I'm like, I'm on. I'm from Cambridge, man. You gotta send me to Cambridge, Cambridge so I get chill. some visit. Yeah, I was right. But then I was over there. What happened when I went there? <laughs> so they ended up putting me in a fucking hole for some stupid shit. So the overflow the old gym on the 20th tier was just a dorm now right and um there's no shower over there so i just got my workout in and we would have to go down the hall and use the showers in the back in wow. 20 rare and all that stuff yeah i remember so they sent me back there and then this one one senior sends me there and the other one sends me back i'm like y'all got to get your y'all got to get your shit together your boy just sent me over here but I, oh well blah, blah, blah. and it was just like a kind of a uh, uh, argument that that was all it was i went back so but, and then they go get for you <laughs> Yeah, they go and get Lud Ludberry or something like that. I remember okay, Ludberry. yeah. Of course. He's like, oh, Superman. He's like, oh, you want to, yeah, you want a shower? What's going on? I tell him, he's like, yeah, come on. And so he takes me back to where those showers were, but he threw me in one of the cells back there and pretty much, like, with the hole. Pretty much, oh, here right. you go. Here's a shower. Right. He I was like, fuck you, you, asshole. And then um, I got the news about what happened. So it was like three in the morning. I'm back there, 20 rare. I hear Lucas. It was a CO. From Cambridge, I grew up with a Mike. Remember Mike? Of course, yeah. Contest. Yeah. So like, That's he literally boy. was in like him and JoJo was in all the classes together. They was same exact age. First thing he said, "You heard about your brother?" My heart dropped, bro. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, my my head went worst case he's dead or something like that. And then he told me what happened, and all that stuff. And I was like, wow, man, it was just, it was tough because it was kind of like, man, I'm already here. I would trade, you know what I mean? I would Absolutely. trade, like, and I'm like, I'm the older brother. He looked up to me. I was a bad older brother. Poor example. And uh, I didn't go back to bed uh, that time. And then uh, he ended up coming in. <clears throat> that was like a Friday, Saturday. And then he came in. And then we were on the same block for a little. And there was another CO, uh, another Cambridge guy. I think Pacheco or something like that. He was like, listen, he's like, any oh, trouble? Pacheco. Yeah, he was like, mm -hmm. he was cool, man. I'm not going to take nothing away, like, whatever, to the extent that a CEO or whatever can be cool. But mm -hmm. he's like, I'm splitting y'all up. Any trouble happens. And it was me, him, and another one of my boys, Tommy, from East Cambridge, too. And I just, know, um, yeah. Tommy Redden, right? Yep, yep. And then someone got a hold of my mail, bro, and started writing to people on the streets. Really? Yes, yes. And I figured out. Actually, I got the name from somebody. I still, I was like, who's this? And then, um, what's his name? SK was doing the canteen. I was like, listen for this name when you're passing out canteen, bro. And he found out exactly who it was, all this stuff. And I went to go. He was on another side. And I went to go over there, try to get a fight in the cell. And dudes, he didn't, oh, he won't go in the cell with you, blah, 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 blah. So I ended up having to get him on roof call, which obviously you're going to get caught. You know right. what I mean? Like, And, uh, yeah, they, they shit me right out, man. And I, then I didn't see... I see my brother for years. I did my state bid. I had to be out for a while before I had to. And then I tried to uh, visit him. They denied me. He's like, appeal it. They're going to deny you. Appeal it. I appealed it. And I did get to see him a couple times. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's for big. contact. Yeah, That's man. Huge. Contact visit. Yeah, that was. And it was kind of like going back in those places, man. That tried, the smell of everything comes back. I even yeah, went to does. get some of his property, bro. Mm -hmm. When I left, I was so happy just to like know like I'm not. All that's behind. It was just like almost like a glow, as if you know how when you first get out, you kind of get that um that glow, like you just nothing can fuck up your day. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh yeah, it was kind of yeah. that, bro, and it puts it in perspective. Um, that yeah. like that's not where I want to be, bro. No, nope. you know what I mean. I didn't even go get. I didn't even pick up my stuff. Yeah, I left it there. I just left it with the prison. Because yeah, it was like some of his legal back. work or stuff. Like you know, he's been in so long, he got. So much, you know what I mean, yeah. and you're only allowed so much too. Yep, um, I, paperwork. I was, and stuff was like, like, "Do you want to come pick up your stuff, Mr. Ahar?" And I was like, "Nope, y'all can do what you like with that stuff. I it does not belong to me. You mm -hmm. know, I am out of it now." And just the thought of even coming back to there, you know, the smell, like you said, definitely is the reason why it will deter me. Like I'm straight. Yeah, you know, I I didn't realize 
you know, just off of a bunch of self-reflection is the fact that, you know, prison's not for me. Why? Because I'm one of those people. I'm a Leo, you know, so I'm one of those people that I just don't like being told what to do. I don't yeah. like authority. I don't like nobody telling me what to do, and that's exactly Plus you, modern you know, day you prison did, you now. Did, you did your time, like now it's I, I did my time. I'm I'm over that. Right, that's not me. But the emphasis is on it is the fact that they are they are high priced babysitters. So they are babysitting these young guys, young kids that are our correctional officers are coming in and telling you what to do. Literally, like the modern day but like prison system now. Like the worst babysitters ever, though. Yeah, the, <laughs> the modern day prison system now. Literally, in the max, you got these guys. They they're punk COs. Literally trying to pick a fight you know trying to make sure you don't go home letting oh, it be known they want they that they, they want that um that injury where they're gonna be home getting paid oh, yeah. oh, come oh, on go they, ahead send me on a vacation oh, for three like, months look, i don't mind they're looking for it i remember i seen him once yo he was out for like a year or yeah like so that. came back what and, happened <laughs> bites him right and he was the biggest right asshole mm-hmm. and something happened and he got hurt in a fight you know what i mean and yep. like they be looking for that on part like oh there's an opportunity for me to maybe get because there's a lot of like guys that. that take it there but don't go all the way so once the seal started picking up on you talk a lot but you don't walk it they took advantage of that expose a lot of guys because they realized that you really want to go home so they took advantage of that so you know but obviously they ran into a few hiccups along the way that guys that really didn't give a shit you know what happened to them they got life in prison what are you gonna do you're messing with my property which was a big issue up there taking guys property and passing it to their rats and their i mean in this times and especially on a block bro if there's a fight in the cell like you can hear it it sounds like murder even though motherfuckers will come out with no scratch sometimes just the the squeaking of the sneakers the banging like, and a lot of times, CEOs know what's going on, and they don't do shit. They right. don't care. I seen, you know how they pop the doors for, like, meds and then breakfast. There was one time, when I think when I first got up there, too, to Concord, it was when 52A, we were all mixed together. And I think dudes locked in from meds to um, two dudes locked in another dude said beat the fuck out of him from right. one, you know what I mean? Yeah. From yep. one... From meds until they open the door again for breakfast, bro. And, like, obviously they pulled everybody in and nobody said nothing. Nobody, you know, got in trouble or anything. Like, I mean, nobody other than I think obviously shit's on camera when two people go into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, that that was crazy. There's no um, there's no culpability on them. There's, there's no responsibility mm-hmm. on them. No repercussions or anything like that on the COs. Oh, that shit. Oh, what the hell? I might have just cut us. That it? I mean the 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 audio's still going. Whatever. Um, what time is it anyway? Seven thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, bro, what's up? What's up with bro though? Yo, is bro's, it looking good? Yeah, I mean, bro's looking good right now. The, the, but it's just you know it's a process. Time. You know, that slow process is what you know is what is is what's killing him. You know the slow process because. You know, they say that, you know, it's quick to get in, hard, slow to get yeah. out of it. And it's like the wheels of justice turn slow. And that's what's going on in his case. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff is coming out, you know, dealing with that same prosecutor. The disgraced prosecutor in my case was his was was on his case and was also on his appeal, which is unheard of. Mm-hmm. Usually the trial prosecutor doesn't do the appeal. He gives it up. Right. But he took it upon himself to do his appeal. Long and short of it, because that disgraced prosecutor come out, came out that he's a disgrace, Mm. You know, it's now uncovering a whole bunch of stuff that got my brother wrongfully convicted. You know what I mean? On the the charge. He's up for murder. So, you know, he's in for first degree, you know, murder conviction. And he's literally like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's being uncovered, which I can't get too much. Yeah, yeah, no, obviously. But at the same time, it it, it does look good for him. You know, it gets to a point where, you know, he he come home a different person, a grown man. When a boy come home a grown man. Yeah, you know, like I like yeah, that, my that little was brother, same man. That yeah, same me. shit. I just hope everybody. I wish everybody the best. I'm proud of you. You out. I'm glad you're out, bro. And, and on that, I just want to tell everybody, you know, stay free. And that's about it, bro. This is out. the bounce back. I'm Bobby. Thanks for coming on, bro. I appreciate, appreciate that. You.